I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry, says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be part of the alliance. So you don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's a hundred people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch, indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear I listener. Think that background music is a little loud. Yes, dear listener. <laughs> How is everybody? What's wrong? What? What has Patreon done? Patreon has once again come to us with a stream. They've done their uh, their alliance yes. uh, polls. And here we have four songs on the docket tonight, and we're about to jump into song number one. All right. Can I see that thing so you can actually touch that low? No, we'll do it right here. Look. Okay. Bang. Shabang. Uh, here we go. Okay, the winner of S&G's first ever SG poll was Dire Straits' Money for Nothing. This song is from their fifth album, Brothers in Arms, 1985. Mark Knopfler wrote it about overhearing a delivery man in New York Department. After he wrote over, it after overhearing a deliver, deliver, delivery men in a New York Department store talk. Excuse me. Some of the lyrics are direct quotes from the conversation. The so, so he was eavesdropping. Oh, this song also, also has <laughs> guest appearance also by dry making money off it. <laughs> The song also has guest appearance by Sting, oh, the police, okay. who sings a signature falsetto introduction, background vocals, and a backing chorus. The lucky one who won the, the member week drawing to do the playlist for the poll was... Dwayne! Dwayne, Dwayne selected this? And then he's right. wow, wow, like this guy, like he's, uh, he's got a little bit more dimensions than you thought. You oh gotta my shrink god, it. these are a lot of lyrics, guy. Shrink it. All right. Shout, by the way, shout out to Misery Biz, who's uh, an amazing leader of the. Uh, uh, which is that the Sin and Glory Alliance? He's he's the leader of uh, that. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the big homie. All right, guys. Here we go. First song up is a band named Dire Straits. Is that what you said? Dire Straits. Yeah. Dire Straits is the name of the band. The name of the song is Money for Nothing. Money for Nothing. Let's do it. Oh, he's running two alliances at the moment. Misery. MTV. I said, I thought I said view. Okay, so this is Sting doing this part. That feel clubby almost. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is, Wayne. Never 
down.
Easy money, easy, easy checks for free. Easy, easy money, checks for free. I ain't working. That right. was Money for Nothing by the band. Dire <laughs> Straits. Dire Straits. Mark, Money for Nothing. This is such... This is probably the most conflicted I'm ever going to be in a, in, a, in a music review. <laughs> why? I'll, I'll explain why in a second, but I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you take off. Go ahead. Um, okay, so... I think... I think for this band, like this was their like a big song for them for this band. I'm not sure. What year? 1985, right? For this, yeah, yeah. like um, a little a hair, like before our time, but like, but go ahead. Uh, for for me, it was a little. He, basically, he's singing about. He's saying like he should he should have been a guitar player. Like bring back MTV. I don't. I don't know whose perspective Bring it back is. MTV. Is that what he said? No. Or did somebody say that in the this, comment section? No, I think this was when they, they were reacting to MTV. I thought it said. He says, "I want my, I want my, I want my MTV." Oh yeah, I yeah. thought that meant bring it back. What does it mean? Like he he this is way back then, and he wants to watch MTV. But then he's talking about the guitar players. No, I think actually the song is actually about um the effect on. MTV on the quality and production of music and how that relates to capitalism, I think, is what was going on in the song. Okay. So, Go that's ahead, what I thought going. was going on lyrically. So, so, basically, they're talking about how how MTV helped people in their musical careers and it helped it become a more capitalist well, run I, endeavor? I think anytime you have like something that's like a new platform like MTV was, you always have the purists who are... Like, I remember watching a clip one time and people were talking about Madonna and they were saying like, are, are, aren't you... Isn't your acting in your music videos like taking away from the purity of the music? And she's like, what do you think I'm doing on stage? I'm acting on stage. So... I thought it was a brilliant response, but again, like at the beginning, there was there was some like antipathy towards MTV. There was like a lot of like, yeah, really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. At the, at the very very beginning, like there there, I was watching that uh, show. Well, I I thought There's MTV movie... was just them playing music videos. What was? Well, yeah, it, it it was, but it was like the first time like young people had like a a, a network that was. You felt like it was run. But now again, I wasn't watching MTV at the time. Like we got it in the '90s. But when you look at the like behind the music stuff and things like that, you can piece together that when MTV first came out, it was like one of the first times that like because you have Nickelodeon or whatever, like the Baby Channel, and then you've got CNN for the adults. There was really nothing kind of like, and so younger people like gravitated towards mtv like crazy because like oh we got something and it's like a new medium what is the m for music television oh okay so it was like how do you combine 
television, which is huge. Mm. And you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like, so MTV was a crazy idea. It was criticized a lot by the experts, but then it, it, and you know, there's a sense in which the criticisms of the experts came out to be true because MTV at this point almost never does music anymore. What do they do? It's like all reality shows and all this other stuff. Like, Oh wow. Yeah. It, it, it's honestly like, I haven't even watched MTV in like 15 years, like honestly. And, and honestly, like YouTube kind of screwed up MTV as well. It's like, I could just go. Mm-hmm. Whereas before, like you had to like yeah. be glued to the TV and watch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So BT was a, was a BC was MTV guy. Right. So it was like, that's what it looked like. It was like, wow, we got this thing and. But it was getting criticized because it was like your song could blow up because now you're in this new medium, but you're not necessarily good. You see what I'm saying? It's like now, like where you have these kids what do you blowing mean, up. You mean you're talking about like Britney Spears? Well, like Britney Spears would be like a clear example of like uh, you know a record label creation, yeah. right? Where like you just pat your packaged a certain way, and because you have. The visual aspect of MT, like Britney Spears' career, would have never took off without the visual aspect, Mm -hmm. right? And so, like, that was the criticism for a lot of bands. Like, you could, like, blow up, like, instantaneously Mm -hmm. if you got a video on MTV. But it was like, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're talented. It just means that there's this new medium here making people mega rich when you don't really have to be that good. Which is Mm -hmm. how I am interpreting the song Money for Nothing. It's like this new generation of people are not very skilled, but they're making all this money because now we've got MTV. See what I'm saying? Yeah. It kind of sounds like what people say about YouTubers. All they do is just click a button, shoot a video, make money. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, (laughs) Making a song entails a lot more than just picking up a guitar and strumming it. And then your bank account fills like there's a lot in that. Yeah. No, it's so, I I agree. I agree. I agree. This is what's confusing to me about the song is they're musicians saying that so i feel like i'm missing something here well yeah they're musicians saying that because they're saying we're the real musicians we've studied at our crafts we got ourselves to the point where we're elite musicians oh then you guys oh, show up from your garage oh, oh and you just and it just so happens it just yeah. so happens that you ended up on mtv and now all of a sudden you're like this you know, whatever. Yeah. Imagine if you watched and somebody succeed. It is kind succeed. of what people say about YouTubers like yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Imagine if you watch somebody succeed and like you hear that, you know, like they have those microphones that like change the tone so you can always hit your notes perfectly. Yeah. So like if you, you know, like you're like Amy Lee. So she's, after she does a show, she's back there still practicing her Correct. scales and stuff. Correct. So you're like a person like her, but you don't make it famous. Let's say she doesn't. And then you have somebody else who doesn't sing good uses that mic, whatever, and they make it, they take off. So, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> me. Correct. Like, yeah. And, and like I said, the, the, the criticism eventually justified itself because, like I said, MTV is no longer about music at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, my first introduction to MTV, well, th- there was this uh, band called Green Jelly. And they had a song called, like, Little Pig, Little Pig, Let Me In. It was, like, Claymation. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, the pigs ended up, like, lighting up the wolf. They, like, shot him, like, with AK-47s and all type of shit. And so I was, like, that was the first, first music video I ever saw on MTV. Came down to Florida. There it was. That was the first music video I saw. Really? So I okay. memorized I memorized that whole song. Little Pig, Little How Pig, Let take? Me In. Not for the uh i i was like obsessed with that song when i was a kid i actually had an interview scheduled with the dudes from green jelly really yeah but I, I, well, ryan was born so that was the end of it you but, know we should yeah, do, we we had should do a video and have them react to it wait is it scary no it's it's claymation but yeah i i just i just this this like um Look, look what Kai says. We used to tape to VHS episodes of Headbangers Ball. It aired here at 1 a.m. on Mondays. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it was the early days. So, like, now it's, like, the same thing because it's now it's, like, oh, you can be on SoundCloud, you know, get heard once by one guy, and that's it. Like, you now have a record deal. I yeah, remember, like. Right. Yeah. People will make TikTok <laughs> videos with their music in it, and if you just happen to put the right visuals behind your audio – on TikTok, then it just, people use it in their videos. It starts getting spread all over the place and it takes off. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's uh, it's insane. It's insane. But like it. <sighs> You know, that line, there was a line in the song where he's talking about a gay person and, you know, it's a... Oh, it's yeah, a, that's right. And, and, you know, it was uncentered, unfiltered, the, uh, you know. And I'm watching Hunter, who's a really young millennial. He's like, because uh, um, Sadie's like, there's a lot of people in the LGBT community that love that song. And he's like, I find that hard to believe. It's like, no. Like, this is what me and there, there's this other guy, like, we both kind of grew up in the 90s, came of age in the 90s type of, well, didn't come of age in the 90s, but we, we were young kids in the 90s, and we were always like, yo, it was just so much freer. Like, you could say things and, like, people, like, like today, it seems like nowadays people get offended because they're supposed to be offended. Oh my God. Like, they're supposed to be offended. Yeah. It's like... Girl, well, if you came up in the '90s, man, like you just heard stuff like this in mm-hmm. in 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 music. I mean, it just because it reflects real life. That's how people talk. You know what I'm saying? Like I, you know, it's not for me to say. You know, I don't. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as like I don't represent that community, but um, you know, it's just one of those like other sort of reminders that we are no longer in that kind of an era like you can't write a song like this like corn there's certain like, yeah i talk about it all the time with homeboy like there's songs that they can't write today right you know what, what i'm saying what, so, do you see that as a negative or a positive well i think the point of what he was saying about that particular situation was i think he's is his milk in there no he's got it yeah he's got okay. it I, I think what he was saying about the gay guy in the song was like yeah you can make fun of him all you want but he's he's like filthy rich See what I'm saying? I don't know if he was dissing David Bowie. I was also thinking about um, what's his face, uh, uh, dude that plays the piano, Elton John. So I was like, maybe that was an Elton John reference, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause he's, it's like, yeah, he he did all this, and he's not a manly man, but he's a millionaire. That was the point of the you know the thing. Yeah. Which a lot of those guys, David Bowie and all those guys, like definitely utilize. I think he was probably referencing Bowie because Bowie definitely utilized the visual aspect and he definitely that's took advantage. I, when you said it i thought mm, probably more david is yeah, he, thought, yeah he definitely took advantage of of uh of that but yeah, yeah man like like you could hear stuff like that in a song and it would not destroy the entire song you see what i'm saying like it wouldn't yeah. now it's like are you kidding me like the band would get disbanded i don't know what would happen today you know and, so, and, so you think it's negative or positive or i I think I think it's absolutely negative that if this band came out with the song today that they would absolutely be canceled. No record label would ever sign them. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I I, I don't know. It's like the whole N word discussion, which to me is just it's just such a ridiculous like juvenile way to talk about it. But like, it's in rap music and it'll be in rap music forever. That's never gonna change, right? So it's like, you know, I I, I don't I don't. I will say this, society, I feel, was less inclined to violence during a period like this when you could hear songs like this. It seems to me we were less divided and we were less inclined to to violence or less inclined to dehumanize people that disagreed with us in the 90s versus today. Where it's just so no, I don't really I don't see that. About the topic to I, I don't I don't really see that as a as a as a positive development in my in my opinion. Hmm. Um I am not so like the wisp the the I loved all the sting parts in the song. I want and, and the irony of the song was like the only part of the song that I really enjoyed was Sting's part. I want my TV. Yeah. The guy was kind of like talking yeah. through the song, and I wonder like I'm like okay maybe he's talking through the song to like kind of make the point like look I've got this hit song and all I'm doing is talking see. Yeah. We don't need to make music anymore. Yeah. And then Sting comes in in the background saying, I want, which is more of a conventional, like, ooh, this sounds really nice to my ears yeah. type of, like, this is good music. But he's saying he wants his MTV. And so, like, there's, like, that that dichotomy yeah. of, like, MTV is ruining music. Yeah. But, but like, the best it. piece of music in it's this piece there. is going to be about yeah. a kid asking for MTV. So. That's interesting. That, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. But, um. 
as far as the song itself, I didn't like it, especially toward the end. When I saw there was like two minutes left, I was like, Subhanallah. Because it was just that same beat over and over and over again. I was like, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. So this young person, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to rank y'all at a 7.3. Oh, I gave it a 7.2. What? You did? I did. All right. I did. I'm sorry, Dwayne. But hey, it's better than a 3.5. We'll be right back. It is better than a 3.5. Okay. Um... It's true. I was dancing, but only to the sting parts. Only to the sting parts! <laughs> um, actually, uh, I'm in the Hard Rock. So we're in the Hard Rock Hotel right now, right? And so they give you, like, they give you names of, of you know, whatever. Like, they, they, they'll name your room after a band or whatever. So we get in, and guess which room we ended up in? <laughs> the freaking Lint Biscuit room. <laughs> I should send that to one of my uh, band homies. Vin, you liar! <laughs> what did I lie about? What did I lie about, y'all? What did I lie about, y'all? I promise you, that's what happened. I want my MTV. Oh, man, I really like that song. Amy Lee in the house. Amy Lee forever, bitches. What y'all on? Yeah, yeah. I ended up in the freaking Limp Biscuit room with uh, Rihanna, like right above our uh, bed uh, post thingamajiggy. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Walk in there and see Rihanna. Look, I, I don't I don't like what happened. Can I try to lay him down? Should I pull that up there? What? Lay him down. Yeah, he's tired, I think. I'm going to pull this over there and turn the light off. Okay. Is it a bad idea? Just nope. I can just take it out. Corn limp song. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I remember when I first heard Limp Biscuit. It was uh, the Nookie video. Actually, the first full Limp Biscuit song I heard was no, no no it was a nookie video it was a nookie video i i i wasn't sure if fred Dur if like if they were being serious or not like if it was like a what do you call it like a like a parody band like a like a weird al type situation it, it was like that like i all right. For a long time, I would listen to that song, and I'd be like, are they making fun of somebody? You know what I'm saying? I'm telling them that we ended up in the Limp Biscuit room. Oh. It was like, you know, like the song Nookie, it took me, it it really took me a, a good half a year, no bullshit, for me to be like, no, nah, they're, being, they're being serious. It's song, like, that's the song. It took me a, took me a very long time. <laughs> All right, you guys, we'll be right back. Did you do the commercial while I was gone? 4.50 announcement, uh, 4.50 a.m. announcement, Vin. True. Uh, is there supposed to be a, a big announcement at 4.50? No. Stop doing that. We don't have an announcement. I don't know if somebody else did. Um, <laughs> I have the I had the misfortune of seeing Limp Bizkit live. They suck. All right, guys, here we go. Song number two. <laughs> All right, song number two. Are you playing the commercial or are we is, going into it? Uh... Yeah, I guess we should play the commercial. All right, All right guys. Give him a little bit of commercial break. Be right back.